Good day to all of you. Through this video, I will be explaining you the first few topics of the lesson Force and Pressure of Class 8. In today's session, we will be discussing the following topics. The meaning of the words push and pull. What is meant by state of motion of an object? How can you define force? What are the effects of force? And what are the conditions for the force to be applied? Let us look into these topics one by one. The words push and pull are very common in our day-to-day -day life. Let us look into some events and revise whether push or pull is happening here and what is the speciality of push and pull. Now, in this picture, you can see a man is trying to push a car. In the second picture, a player is trying to push a ball by using a hockey stick. What is common in both these two pictures? In both these two pictures, one of the common factor is both the person is trying to move the object away from oneself. In the first picture, the man is trying to move the car away from him. In the second picture, the player is trying to move the hockey ball away from him. Let us look into another event where a horse is pulling a cart. In this, the horse is trying to hold the cart towards itself. In this picture, a man is pulling a cart. In this also, the force is being applied in such a way that he is trying to move the object towards him. Wherein, in this picture, you can see a group of boys are trying to pull the rope. Pulling means you can you may come to know by now the common property of pulling is in all these events we will be trying to move the object towards ourselves. Whereas in pushing, you can see in the last picture, the player is trying to push the football away from him. We say in common language is kicking the football. In this also, the word push is most suitable. So everywhere in all these pictures, some force is being applied by the persons, whether it is in the form of push or pull. So from these pictures and the discussion of the pictures, we come to a common understanding that both the words push and pull, we are using to perform some work. And we use the term push if we are trying to move the object away from us and we'll be using the term pull if we are trying to move the object towards us so force means it will be a push or pull and the definition of push is this a force which is applied to make an object move away from oneself whereas the definition of pull is a force which is applied to bring an object closer to oneself so we came to a better understanding of the commonly used words push and pull and how distinctly these words can be used based on the movement of the object. If the object is moving towards, we use the term push and if the object is moving away, we should use the term pull. Now, let us look into some events like we, force is a very commonly used term. We'll just look into some events and we can come to certain conclusion that what are the possible outcomes of force? What all things a force can do? Now, in this picture, I'm showing a wicket keeper trying to stop a ball from making a goal. So if the goalkeeper is not applying the force on the ball, if he is not able to touch the ball, what happens the ball will keep on moving which means it will continue its state of motion so unless a force has been applied that moving object will keep on moving so we can conclude here that a force can do one thing that it can stop a moving object 
it is not only force is not only used to stop the moving object let us look into another instance where a hockey player is trying to move the ball with the help of the hockey stick if the stick is not coming in contact with the ball the ball will not move right so if the ball was at rest we need to apply a force in order to move the object so force is needed to stop a moving object on the other hand a force is needed to change the speed of an object as well if the ball was at rest some force is needed to break its resting state if the ball was moving with the help of the hockey stick the speed of the ball can be increased so we came to know two things that a force can do one is a force can stop a moving object second one is a force can change the speed of an object let us think these are are these the only things a force can do or are there some other after effects of force yes we look into this scenario where a batsman is trying to hit a cricket ball wherein the bowler will be moving the ball in the direction of the batsman so in order to score runs he has to hit the ball otherwise the ball might end up in the gloves of the wicket keeper or it might take the wicket of the batsman so in order to score the run he has to apply a force and during this process what the batsman is trying to do is he is trying to change the direction of motion of the ball otherwise normally the bowler will ball in such a way that the ball will rest in the wicket keeper's gloves so in order to change the direction of the ball batsman has to apply a force so we are coming to the third effect of force that a force can change the direction of motion of an object now is there any other thing a force can do let us look into this example squeezing a lemon during this process what are we trying to do we are by, by applying a force the shape of the lemon will be changing it's not only about squeezing a lemon when you look around you you will be seeing a number of events where the force will change the shape of an object suppose you are playing with a rubber band what you do is by stretching stretching means you are trying to apply a force so the rubber band will get stretched or you all might be playing with clays to make different models in order to change the shape you have to press it you have to apply certain force to mold it into proper shape right so a force can change the shape of an object also so we have discussed a force can stop a moving object force can change the speed of an object force can change the direction of a moving object or a force can change the shape of an object now when you are defining force all these events can be categorized into one term let us look into what is that term state of motion the meaning of state of motion is this state of motion is described by its speed and direction of motion so when you say that the state of motion of an object is changed it can be either a change in its speed or it can be a change in the direction also so when you say that something can change the state of motion the description of force will become more complete that is force can be defined as a push or pull that can change the state of motion of an object so this will give more clarity about definition of force i hope the topic of definition of force is very very clear to all of you now let us look into what are the effects of force we are just trying to point out all the list which we have already discussed that is a force can stop a moving object can move an object at rest can change the speed of a moving object can change the direction of motion of an object and can change the shape of an object now let us look into what are the conditions for the force to be applied now at any time you can't say that a force is been applied 
Now I'm showing you a picture where a man is trying to push the car. So if you want to move the car, he cannot just stand near the car so that the car will not move. In order for the car to move, first thing is he should have an interaction with the car. In this case, the interaction is he should touch the car. So that is the first condition. Condition is there should be an interaction between two objects. Definitely in order for force to be applied, at least two objects has to be there. So for the conditions for force to be applied can be concluded as follows. First one is there must be at least two objects. One should apply the force and the second object should receive the force. So one condition is there must be at least two objects. Second condition is an interaction of one object with another object is very much essential. See, when I use the term interaction, it does not mean that every time one has to touch the other object. Sometimes without touching also, two objects can interact. For example, you all might have played with magnets as youngsters, right? If you are keeping a magnet and some iron piece near to it, even without touching, you will be experiencing a force, right? So that is an interaction itself, but the magnet and the iron piece is not in direct contact, which means force can be of two types. One type of interaction is through direct contact. Another type of interaction is even without a direct contact, some force can be experienced between the objects. So based on this property of force, we can classify force into two categories. We will be discussing about the classification of force into two categories through the next video. I hope today's video is very helpful to all of you. We have discussed about how can you define force. In order to define force, we should be knowing three terms. One is what is the proper meaning of push. Second one is what is the proper meaning of pull. And the third one is what do you mean by state of motion? Because when you define force, you say that it is a push or a pull which change the state of motion of an object. So the word meanings, push, pull, and state of meaning should be very clear to all of you. Second thing we discussed is what are the effects of force? By applying a force, what all changes we can bring about in an object? We discussed that it can change the state of rest of an object. It can start motion. It can change the speed of motion of an object. It can change the direction of motion of an object or it can change the shape of an object. Then we discussed what are the conditions for the force to be applied. There are two conditions. There must be at least two objects. And second condition is an interaction of one object with another object is necessary then only force will be acting on an object thank you for watching this video take care bye bye